Every single time you step on an airplane, you're placing your trust in an invisible science. It's the science of materials, of metals forged to be strong enough to handle the incredible forces of flight, but somehow also light enough to even get off the ground. Today, we're going to pull back that curtain and look at the essential metals that make modern aviation even possible. So, let's start with a little bit of a puzzle. What on earth could a simple grinding wheel, you know, the kind you'd find in literally any workshop, have to do with the safety of a multi-million dollar airliner? They seem like they're worlds apart, right? But believe it or not, that wheel holds the key to one of the most fundamental and critical tests in all of aviation. Here's our flight plan for today. First, we'll identify the core metals we're talking about. Then we'll learn the language engineers use to describe their strength. We'll see how they're forged with fire, how to mix the perfect recipe for alloys, and finally, how to decode the steel itself. All right, section one, metals that fly. Look, before you can build or, just as importantly, repair an aircraft, you have to know exactly what you're working with. Getting this wrong isn't just a mistake, it can be catastrophic. So first, all metals are split into two big families. The first one is called ferrous. The name's a dead giveaway. It comes from ferrum, which is just the Latin word for iron. And that's because iron is their main ingredient. This is what makes them magnetic, but it also gives them a huge Achilles heel. They rust. And this right here creates a fundamental trade-off that engineers always have to wrestle with. On one side, you've got your ferrous metals, super strong and magnetic. But on the other, you have non-ferrous metals, like aluminum or titanium. They don't have iron, so they're lighter and way, way more resistant to corrosion. This single distinction is the starting point for pretty much every material choice on an airplane. So let's get back to our grinding wheel. How do you actually tell these metals apart when you're on the workshop floor? Well, the first test is incredibly simple. Use a magnet. If it sticks, you know it's ferrous. But that doesn't tell you which ferrous metal it is. For that, you use the spark test. A trained technician can literally touch the metal to a grinding wheel and read the shower of sparks that it creates. The length, the shape, the color of that fiery stream, it's a unique signature for each and every alloy. It's amazing. Okay, section two, the language of strength. Now that we can identify a metal, we need a vocabulary to describe what it can actually do. These are the terms engineers live and breathe by, the properties that define how a material behaves under stress. The two big ones, the most important ones, are strength and hardness. Strength is pretty straightforward. It's the metal's ability to resist the insane forces of flight without snapping in half. Hardness, on the other hand, is all about resisting surface damage, things like scratches, dings, and general wear and tear. So to put it really simply, strength is about not breaking, while hardness is about not scuffing. And for an airplane, you obviously need both. Next up are the properties that let us shape metal into all the complex parts an aircraft needs. Ductility is what allows a metal to be drawn out into thin wires or twisted into tubing. And malleability is what lets you hammer or roll it into curved sheets, like for an engine cowling, without it cracking. You absolutely have to have both of these to build a modern airplane. And a few other key properties round out the list. You've got elasticity. That's what allows a wing to flex in turbulence and then snap right back to its original shape. The exact opposite of that is brittleness, which is what you don't want, a metal that just shatters instead of bending. Toughness is its ability to resist being torn or sheared. And finally, maybe the most important one of all for aviation, density. Weight is everything. Every single ounce counts. Section three, forging with fire. So, what happens if a metal's natural properties aren't quite what you need for a specific job? Well, that's where heat comes into play. Heat treatment is this incredible art of changing a metal's internal structure to basically unlock entirely new characteristics. It's an incredibly precise process of heating and cooling. For steel, the real magic happens in what's called the critical range. That's somewhere between 1300 and 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside that temperature window, the metal's internal crystal structure literally rearranges itself. And how you cool it down from there is what determines its final properties. Let's look at two key softening processes, annealing and normalizing. Now get this, the only difference between them is how fast the metal cools down. If you cool it very, very slowly inside a furnace, that's called annealing. It gives you a super soft, stress-free metal. 
But if you just pull it out and let it cool in still air, that's normalizing. And that simple change in cooling makes the steel slightly harder and about 20% stronger. It's all in the cool down. And then you've got this brilliant process called case hardening. This gives you the best of both worlds for parts like gears that need a really hard, wear-resistant surface, but also a tough core that can absorb shock. So first, you infuse carbon just into the surface of the part. That's called carburizing. Then you heat treat it in a way that hardens that carbon-rich outer case, but leaves the inside, the low-carbon core, tough and flexible. Section 4. The Perfect Recipe Now, all this talk about adding carbon brings us to a really key point. Almost no metal used on an aircraft is a pure element. They are all alloys, carefully crafted recipes designed for maximum performance. So what is an alloy? It's simply a base metal, like iron, that has other elements intentionally mixed into it. And we're talking small quantities here. But even those tiny additions can completely transform the material, giving it properties that the base metal could never, ever achieve on its own. It's like culinary chemistry. And it really is just like following a recipe. Carbon is the most important ingredient in steel. It's what adds hardness and strength. Want to make it rust-proof? You add chromium. That's literally the stainless in stainless steel. Need more strength, but you can't afford for it to become brittle? You add some nickel. And for extra toughness and wear resistance, a dash of molybdenum. Each ingredient has a very specific job to do. And here's a perfect real-world example. The famous 188 stainless steel. It's a workhorse, used all over aircraft, is just a recipe. The name itself tells you exactly what's in it. 18% chromium and 8% nickel mixed with iron. It's that simple. Section 5. Decoding the steel. So if every type of steel is its own unique recipe, how on earth do you keep them all straight? How does an engineer in one country know they're using the exact same material as a designer halfway across the world? Well, they use a universal code. The Society of Automotive Engineers, or SAE, created a numbering system that is, for all intents and purposes, a universal recipe card for steel. It's not just some random set of numbers. It is a brilliant, simple code that tells you the exact chemical makeup of the alloy. Let's decode one of the most common aircraft steels. SAE-4130, also known as chromomoly. The first digit, the 4, tells you it's a molybdenum steel. The second digit, the 1, tells you the approximate percentage of that main alloy, so about 1% molybdenum. And the last two digits, 30, tell you the carbon content in hundreds of a percent. So 4130 is a molybdenum steel was 0.30% carbon. Simple, elegant, and totally universal. And all of this, from the spark tests, to the heat treatments, to the SAE code, it all brings us back to this one essential truth. This isn't just a fun academic exercise. This is a fundamental pillar of aviation safety. Knowing for sure that a part is 4030 steel and not some other similar looking alloy, that knowledge is what separates a safe flight from a potential disaster. That invisible science we talked about at the beginning, it turns out it's the most important science of all. Thanks for joining us.